Uh, so do you mean to say this eye is causing all the trouble? Yes. Not other's eye, our own eye created by the mind. So the Master says in a beautiful verse, Tadaham tada bandhanam. Where there is this I-ness in the mind, there is a bondage, there is a suffering, there is a pain, there is worries, there is a sadness. Naham tada moksha. Where there is no I-ness, there is a liberation, there is awakening, there is peace. We share our experiences once we are on. So share your thoughts also of contemplation and reflection in the state of doing nothing. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Aum. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Aum. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand. You, you, the mind recognizes here is a right hand. And it is only a perception. It is not connected to the I-ness. That is also possible. The mind goes to the left arm. You see, it is, is it not the one mind that is going to the left arm? Is the left arm is not one? I'm just giving you a perspective. And lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside. Know your experiences. Bring the hands down, my friends. How are you, David and Jerry? Um very enjoyable it was i i felt this tremendous freedom in my awareness is the best way i can describe it and it was just, yeah it was really nice beautiful you see what is if we reflect on what is freedom the freedom always takes place in the consciousness why freedom is the property of the consciousness is there any freedom of the body? No. Is there any freedom of the mind? No. So once we live into that awareness, how are you, Jerry? Sir, I'm good. Thank you. Um, yeah, light, free. Um, that's how the meditation felt. And through my days, um, huh? that through the days it's uh, the mind with the knowledge and the faith sees everything as one. 
Beautiful. Keep and also keep communicating in these ways to your family, <laughs> to the society, to the world outside, wherever we go. It is required. Why it is required so that our mind is totally settled, settled completely settled into that freedom. Wonderful. How are you, Ashok? Thank you. I'm very good and fine, peaceful. Good and fine. And you were checking messages? Before meditation. Oh, put on airport aeroplane mode oh okay 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 aeroplane mode yeah. yes keep your mind on aeroplane mode in meditation <laughs> <laughs> good <laughs> <Are> you scary um aeroplane mode i'm not um i'm distracted by this thing that the body is doing and it's uh hard to ignore um so i don't know yeah yeah explain it in a different way what is the contemplation here is my body is not allowing me yeah where is this my comes with the body you start contemplating and reflecting some days your body is totally motionless I so it I feel that my body is stealing the um, experience, and I, I get angry. <laughs> you are right. A glass of water will dry up an ocean. Hmm. Your body is just like a glass of water. It, how it can exhaust the consciousness? Um, Check mind. How dare you say, mind, that my body movement is stealing that pure consciousness? Not possible. Tell the body you continue to move. I am still there. Yes. Yes, that is how are you, Brandy? <clears throat> Good morning. Thank you. Um, these non practices are not non practices for me. I was uh, listening to you and also observing the uh, like shifting back and forth between listening to you and this perception of Inus, which kind of like what Terry was talking about with our body just does its own thing. And it was interesting to watch the back and forth of being in the contemplation of that. Yes. So, but I'm still relaxed. That's the nice thing about it. So relaxed. You see that? <clears throat> you said something and I used the expression, I nodded the head. But if I become aware of this movement of the head, it has nothing to do with I. Are you getting this has nothing to do with that. <laughs> but we we localize our consciousness uh, you understand that localization we localize our consciousness and we say here i am very sad and crazy and disturbed uh, for example And now, Rakesh, how are you? Thank you, sir. Sir, today when uh, we were doing the meditation, uh, I had a very severe pain in, in my one of the teeth. Yeah. And in in those moments, I I just 
removed all the memories about the pain. I said, "What is pain? Let us look into it." So yeah. I, I went in. I went inside the pain and see what it is. And I see there was uh, no pain. It was just a feeling. And uh, I continued with that. And a few moment, uh, the pain gone. And I, I then I, pro I proceeded with the with the meditation. Uh, it was a new experience. It was a new yeah. experience. Yes, it is beautiful. Buddha used to teach his students how to transcend the pain in the body. So he explained in one of the story books of the Buddhism. For example, you have a pain in the knee. So what has happened to Rakesh? I'm just explaining you. <clears throat> Say, for example, you have a pain in the knee. So you're right, you close your eyes and find out the find out the area of the pain. So what do you find the area of the pain? It may be in a circle all around the knee. And then you have a perception of that pain. So what will happen if the area is this big because of the perception, you want to know from where the pain originated, you reach to a point, not the entire area. Actually, any pain starts from a particular point. And the moment your awareness is on the point, the pain is separated from the suffering caused by the mind. Did you understand that? Yeah, I know. You all understand that. Pain, I have a pain. And then suffering. I'm not able to prevent a thought. I went to the dentist. You see my teeth. He says if we uh, remove this teeth, all your teeth will be gone. It is the strongest one. So I don't look so beautiful. I'll continue to keep the teeth. <laughs> you see, we adjust with this reference to the eyeness. Take it casually. Anesthesia, where are you? Thank you. Oh, it was uh, very peaceful and um, my body today was moving. It's interesting because usually it's still and I got this moment. I think I realized the moment after a little. So I think maybe uh, the second after uh, it actually moved. It moved. Uh, yeah. But you are able to maintain the calm and... Yes, it was very calm, but uh, a little bit unusual. It's okay. Calmness and the peace are the properties of consciousness. Just say for what? Even though it is not. But, but when I say it is not, then you will say, then why should I practice meditation? You know, so, you know, Teacher takes you to a deeper level. Last one, you know, Vaibhav. Uh, sir, I'm good. Uh, it was peaceful. Uh, it's like in that moment of awareness, uh, when you say that every thought, I am connected with the minus. There's a minus in that. And that minus starts dissolving. So when there's no minus, then this thought becomes independent. I'm not, I'm not bothered about that thought. It was come and go, and there's nothing there. Yes, there is a... So it happens due to a constant contemplation and reflection. Oh, thoughts are always free. Or you can say, I am free from the thought. Uh, something uh, popped up in my mind. The moment you express, I am free from the thought, you are already into the perception states that I has no meaning. There are many thoughts and I is associated with the thought. 
then I has some weight is some uh, yeah, look at this you know he's good and she is bad and etc etc along this uh, association now when the I am is free from the Think of, contemplate, and reflect on these crazy thoughts. To be in the state of meditation all the time, that is all for today. Thank you. Thank you, Namaste. Thank you sir. Namaste, everyone. Thank you.